This is the Akasa Alusha H4 Plus, the cheaper and more serious sibling of the Akasa Soho H4 Plus that I've reviewed a few months ago. These two CPU coolers are nearly identical in shape and supposedly performance as well, but the Alusha H4 Plus has no RGB LEDs and plastic covers. It also has a lower price tag and promise to deliver a good performance, and in this review we will put those claims to the test. The Alusha H4 Plus is a good looking CPU cooler that is not following the usual RGB trends of today. That's the job of the Soho H4 Plus. However, due to this lack of RGB LEDs, this CPU cooler has its own design and color. It has a black and dark blue color combination, which will not be for everyone, as blue cannot be matched with all colors at once. But on the other hand, it is a nice thing to see in a sea of addressable RGB LED CPU coolers that have almost no design apart from those before mentioned lights. When we talk about the pricing, the Alusha H4 Plus is around 16 euros cheaper than the Soho H4 Plus and that's all down to the design of the CPU coolers. The Alusha H4 Plus can be had for 49 euros while the Soho H4 Plus is hovering at 65 euros, at least at the time of this review. The design of this CPU cooler is certainly good and elegant to some extent, no useless and obnoxious RGB LEDs everywhere, no plastic made covers and a simple single tower heatsink design with a metal made mounting system. The Alusha H4 Plus has a single 120mm fan for its active cooling, this is the Akasa DFS 122512L fan. It has a minimum speed of 500 RPM and a maximum speed of 2000 RPM. Fortunately, this fan can be controlled through software and thus you can easily quiet it down if needed. It is also safe to point out that unfortunately this fan cannot be completely stopped via software. The corners of the fan frame are using rubber pads to dampen the vibrations caused by the rotation of the impellers. Speaking of the impellers, these have a different design which is optimized for airflow and low noise operation. The cable of this fan is long enough to reach a fan header on your motherboard. It has no sleeving unfortunately, but it is all black and will blend easily with the rest of your system. The heatsink has a single tower design and uses no less than 44 aluminum made cooling fins. These have the usual design elements that have been widely used by everyone before. The sides of the heatsink have a notch that serves as the mounting point for the fan clip, while the front and back of the heatsink are shaped to provide a bit more room for the airflow and to limit the noise caused by air turbulences. A great thing to see with this heatsink is the offset design that effectively pushes the entire CPU cooler away from the RAM slots of the motherboard. This means that you will get more clearance for your RAM kit and can install larger RAM modules. What's not so good about this heatsink is what's not good about many heatsinks in this price range. The heat pipe endings which are not symmetrical at all and you will get to see them all the time. Speaking of the heat pipes, the Lusha H4 Plus has 4 of them and they are made from copper and have the standard 6mm outer diameter and they are arranged in a U-shaped pattern for better heat transfer. The base plate of the heatsink is made from aluminum and copper, the copper part being the surface of the before mentioned heat pipes. That's because this cooler uses a direct touch base plate design which means exactly what it says, that the heat pipes are integrated into the surface of the base plate. While an effective design, a solid base plate made from nickel plated copper is considered better for a CPU cooler as it has a better contact surface and better heat dissipation. And now we get to see what comes included with the Alusha H4 Plus and we start with the simple user manual, a tube of thermal compound, a backplate with pre-installed bolts, plastic spacers, thumb screws and black bolts. We also have two sets of mounting arms, one for AMD and the other for Intel. Four mounting clips for the fan, double threaded screws for the LGA 2000 series platforms and plastic spacers for the new Intel LG 1700 platform. The installation procedure is as simple as it can be as this CPU cooler uses a really basic mounting system. I'd guess that you only need around 2-3 to three minutes to install the whole cooler in your system. You get the backplate and adjust the bolts to match the holes of your motherboard. Then you place the backplate at the back of the CPU socket. With that in place, you place the required black spacers 
over the backplate bolts on the front side of the motherboard. Afterwards, you place the correct for your platform mounting bars and secure them with these thumb screws. Finally, you apply the thermal compound on the CPU surface and place the heatsink over the CPU and the mounting bars, lining up the spring-loaded screws with the threaded notches on the mounting bars, and then place the fan on the front of the heatsink, clipping the fan clips on the sides of the heatsink. And with the CPU cooler installed in our testing system, we get to see that the Alusha H4 Plus is not that big of a CPU cooler. It's not small either, but it does not look underpowered. In terms of the clearance, for the graphics card you get 26mm of space between the side of the CPU cooler and the backplate of the graphics card, a clearance that I'd say it's average at best. When it comes to the RAM clearance it's looking great, as this CPU cooler will not interfere with the RAM slots at all, that's thanks to the offset design of the heatsink and the heat pipes, which pushes the front fan of the cooler away from the RAM slots of the motherboard. Before we test the CPU cooler and see its cooling performance, you will get to hear an actual noise sample of the CPU cooler with its fan going from the lowest RPM available up to the maximum, in this case 2000 RPM. I am doing this because while a decibel value is useful for comparison, it does not take into consideration other noises such as wind turbulences, high pitch noises and vibrations of the fan. With a single 120mm fan running at 2000 RPM, the Acasa Alusha H4 Plus reached a maximum noise output of 42 decibels with the measuring device placed at the standard distance of 10 cm from the CPU cooler. This places the Acasa Alusha H4 Plus below the Acasa Soho H4 Plus and on the same level as the Noctua NH-C14S. The performance testing is done using an Intel i9-9900K CPU which is running at both its factory turbo boost frequency and it is manually overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. The first test uses the Intel Burn Test V2 benchmark, a popular benchmark that is often used to test the overclocking stability of CPUs. And more importantly, this software will provide a CPU load that is on the same level as what you'd get while playing a modern video game. And in this test, the Acasa Alusha H4 reached a maximum temperature of 58 degrees Celsius with the CPU at its turbo boost frequency and 64 degrees Celsius with the CPU running at 5 GHz on all cores. This makes the Akasa Alusha H4 cooler by 1 degree Celsius than the Soho H4 Plus, which is not that surprising given that the fan on the Soho H4 Plus has a lower CVM rating than the fan on the Alusha H4 Plus. However, the next test is where each CPU cooler is pushed to its very limit as this test uses the system stability test of the AIDA64 Extreme software. This software will place an unrealistically high load on the CPU, something that you will rarely if ever encounter in your daily usage. In fact, the only CPU load that gets close to this is heavy video rendering with the CPU as the only rendering unit. And in this test, the Alusha H4 Plus reached a maximum temperature of 74 degrees Celsius with the CPU running at its factory turbo boost frequency and 90 degrees Celsius with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. This performance makes the Alusha H4 Plus close enough to the Soho H4 Plus to call it a draw between these two. Still, it's a good result for such a small CPU cooler. When we look at the Akasa Alusha H4 Plus, it's easy to spot the benefits of such a small and simple CPU cooler, especially for a budget gaming system. The color combination used on the fan is not for everyone, but it is good, as we rarely get a dark blue with black on CPU coolers. The lack of addressable RGB LEDs or just RGB LEDs in general is a welcomed feature, especially since you are paying less for not having them. If you want the Alusha H4 Plus but with RGB LEDs, then you might as well just buy the Akasa Soho H4 Plus and pay a premium for just some pretty lights. But that cooler offers the same performance, give or take, but looks better overall and has the desired RGB LEDs. Going back to the Alusha H4 Plus and its performance, hitting 90 degrees Celsius might not look that great, but that is with an Intel i9-9900K CPU running at 5 GHz on all cores. A lot of CPU coolers, especially those that are aimed towards the budget market, will not even handle 5 GHz on all cores, let alone keep the temperature in check at 90 degrees Celsius. Even with two fans though, I wouldn't really recommend this CPU cooler for heavy CPU overclocking, as it has a small heatsink 
with only 4 heat pipes and thus the CPU cooler can do so much before it gets overwhelmed. As for the noise output, it's not low at 42 decibels but the sound generated by the fan is not annoying and you can deal with it. And if you don't need the fan running at maximum RPM all the time, you can lower it thanks to the PWM functionality. The Lusha H4 Plus is a surprising CPU cooler that offers a good cooling performance. The mounting system is great and even a complete beginner will be able to install this cooler in under 5 minutes. This CPU cooler is a great choice for a medium range gaming system, with a good airflow inside your case. This cooler will deliver a good performance, however don't try to use such a small CPU cooler on high TDP CPUs, as it cannot handle that much heat. However, for under 50 US dollars or euros, the Lusha H4 Plus is a good CPU cooler than a good choice overall for a gaming system. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more. And if you want to support me in the direct way, then in the description below, you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Star pages of this channel.